Hi guys, it's Kelly Taylor here and I am back with a, another card for Trinity Stamps. And today, since we are letting summer go, which makes me very sad, I am moving on to a fall card. I'm using Harvest Blessings, I am using the A2 size uh, foundations oval stencil, and then I am also using the Simply Sentiments Thankful. I love a framed image, okay? Not everybody does, but I do. I think it gives a very clean look. So for these little ovals, I wanted to do a like a little watercolor background, but I wanted it to be contained within my oval. So I wanted to show you that if you don't want to do the stenciling, if you just wanted to freehand paint it, you could just trace the oval with your little uh, pencil and then do your watercoloring over top. I'm going to ink blend mine and then watercolor it because that just seemed easier to me. So I picked out some tealy blue colors um, and then I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of a gradient from the top to the bottom and for the first color which is salvage patina I'm going to fill in the whole circle. I am working on watercolor paper. I like the Canson Montevall watercolor paper but as long as it's watercolor paper you can use whatever you got. You just regular cardstock isn't meant to hold up to water um, and then I told you <laughs> I told you guys that um I was I loved these little blending buddies and that I was going to get some and my box just arrived uh, and I'm so excited because I did purchase so many more, so many. In crafting, when you find something that you love, like you just got to go with it. Um, so, and I like having, like you don't have to have one for every color or one for every more than one for each color family, but I like having that. And um, so I did buy a couple of more for each color family. Uh, that's why you see me with two teals up there. Um, but anyway, so darker at the bottom, lighter at the top, and then I'm just going to blend that out. Because watercolor paper is meant to kind of like resist that moisture, your ink blending is much easier because it sits on top. So I'm going to go in now that all my ink blending is done. I'm just using some clean water. You saw me just pour it on my little water bottle there. Um, and I'm just going to go in with a, this is a number eight round brush, but again, use whatever you got. And then I'm just going to add some water. This is just going to create some texture in the background, move that pigment around to give it that watercolor look that I'm going for. I am being very careful around the edges because, you know, this stencil is being held in place by my sticky mat. Um, so it's not there's there's no edge. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the edge isn't stuck down. So I'm just being super careful. There is one part in the left hand side where I could tell that it had seeped under my stencil. And so now that I'm done, everything else came out super clean. It was really easy. Um, that one little spot, which isn't a huge deal, I'm just going to go in and blot it with a baby wipe. Um, most distressing colors will lift pretty cleanly. Uh, and the same with like real actual watercolors. If you catch them early before they dry, you can lift them. Uh, but I am going to be doing like some spatters and things like that in the background. Uh, so I'm not overly worried about it. I did just pick two of the colors. I picked Uncharted Mariner and uh, Peacock Feathers, and I'm just kind of going to splatter those while it is still wet. Um, and for this, I went down to a number two round brush because I just find that with the eight, it's just the splatters are a little bit too big. I'm not trying to get a crazy messy background, just a couple of splatters. And if you aren't into splatters at all, skip this part. Totally fine. But Anyway, going back to the the framed image, um, if you've been a follower of mine for a long time, you know that this is true. I love something that is that is framed in. I just think it creates such a clean focal point for your card. And then um, I am going to go in again. This is still wet. This is gold perfect pearls, and I am just splattering them on because I'm putting it on the background while it is still wet, it's kind of going to bloom out into the water and make the gold really soft. And then I'm going to set that aside to dry. We're going to now work on our next piece. I chose the Harvest Blessings because I love how it's got this little curve in it. And I thought that it would look great to finish off my framed focal point. Um, but if you don't have this particular stamp or you don't have a stamp that has like that round edge, um, you can build this yourself. So in this set in particular, it has this um, 
kind of swag, this pumpkin swag with the little flowers. It's so pretty. Um, but then we there's also like a, a pumpkin that you could use um, to do like a little pumpkin frame. Or they, Trinity has another set. It's called, <laughs> I'm never going to say this right. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. It's gourds, guys. It's pumpkins and squashes and stuff. It's super cute. So that would be a great one to kind of like build out a frame with. You can do like pretty much any images. Uh, you just want to adhere them kind of in like a semicircle. And I chose to put mine on the bottom this time, but you could absolutely put them on the top. You could do the top and the bottom to build kind of like a half wreath to, you know, accent your frame. Um, it's just a really easy, like without having to think too much about your design, adding in a frame um, can just bring everything together without too much forethought, which I always kind of appreciate. So now we're onto the Copic coloring. This is, um, this is pretty, I mean, this is the only thing we're coloring. So this is kind of a short video for me, honestly. Um, but so I just picked some yellow greens. You can pick whatever you know, green strike your fancy. I knew I was doing like the tealish blue color and that is a kind of a compliment to an orange or a red orange. So I thought that a lime green would be nice um, because it is equal distance away from each other on the color wheel. So uh, conversely, I could have gone the other way and done like a red violet um, like a purpley pink, and that would have looked nice as well, but I have leaves, and I'm not going to color my leaves purpley pink, so yellow green it was. Plus, I like a, like a lime green, like a neon green, um, but you could do any variation of green, and that would be fine. These are some very large leaves, uh, which is great. It makes it for much easy coloring, um, so you just, the only thing that I would say here is just make sure you pay attention to the way that the lines are drawn because these are, how would you describe them? Because these are like fluffier leaves. Um, there's a lot of rounded lines. And so just make sure when you're putting down your shading, you're following the lines that are drawn in there. If you try to go a different direction than the, the lines that are drawn in there, it will be noticeable in your coloring. If you're like, Kelly, I don't have time to follow lines and all that jazz, uh, which I totally get, then I would just do one flat color. That would be my suggestion. So now we have moved on to the pumpkin. The pumpkin is going to be darker in the back because it's behind. Um, and then each segment, I am just adding a bit of darkness to either the left or the right of it. If it's on the left side of the pumpkin, then I'm adding the darkness to the left. If it's to the right side of the pumpkin, I'm adding the darkness to the right. And pumpkins are some of the easiest coloring, you guys. It's so easy. Um, you literally just do lines of color. Just take your colors and go one right over the other. The only exception to that is the center piece. Um, and for that, I just kind of do some feathering strokes up and down and leave the lighter area in the middle. That lighter area in the middle will help give it a more round appearance. Um, but pumpkins are a great practice piece, especially if you're just getting into coloring. And this is true for any medium. Like you can use these um, techniques for any medium. I could have done my flowers that uh, red violet color we were talking about, and that would have been really pretty, but I was trying to keep this super clean. So I just decided to do them orange. And again, I'm just following the lines that are put there in the drawing. Um, so they have a lot of shading in the centers. And then where the petals are meeting in the center of the flower, um, I'm adding some shading there as well. And then I'm leaving just the littlest, tiniest bit on the edge as my highlight. And that is that uh, yellow color. I feel like I'm trying to pack a lot in here because um, normally, you know, I have like 30 minutes to chat your ear off. But this one just, this card came together super quick, which really is just a testament to how like the frames, how easy they are to make your card come together because it didn't take me long at all. So now I want my frame to be a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to put my stencil back in place and then I'm going to take a fine liner and I'm just going to butt it up right against the stencil and give it a black outline. Now you saw me starting at the bottom. The reason I'm starting at the bottom is because you're more likely to have an error 
in the where you start or where you finish. So I'm starting where I know nobody's going to see it in case I do have like a little slip of the pen. Um, and then here, I was trying to decide, do I want the frame to be on the outside or on the inside? Ultimately, I ended up deciding that I wanted the frame to be on the outside. So I just selected the next largest stencil size. I put that in place and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start at the bottom and then I'm going to take it all the way around. And this is going to create that framed look. Now you could do both. You know, you can put as many lines in here as you would like. You could color that frame and make it really a part of the focal point. I wanted the pumpkins and the leaves to, to shine, so I just left it as an outline. But you definitely could add more to that to really highlight the frame. For my sentiment, I chose the... Um, the script thankful and then the other portion of it says today and every day and i'm stamping this down on black cardstock in gold pigment uh ink and then i'm going to heat emboss it with gold embossing powder because i have that gold in the background and i know that i'm going to do more gold spatter you'll see that here in a second um the gold just made sense to me but a white would be nice here too just a nice neutral uh either or i just like to tie in my my black you know, stamping, and then the black frame. I just like everything to kind of tie together when I'm building out a design. Um, the thankful itself has a die. The sub-sentiment does not, but that's no big deal. They're all the same size. It's super easy to just trim it into a label. Um, so I'm going to line up my dies for my thankful and then also for the pumpkin and cut those out. Uh, really easy. And I love how it cuts out like the little... In because it's got all these cute little curly cues. I don't know. It just, it reminds me of Cinderella. It just looks like magic. Um, so pretty quickly, I realized that I wanted a little bit of a, like I wanted to be able to mat it. So I'm trimming this down. It My oval still is more toward the top. My oval is not centered, but I can't have my oval centered because my pumpkin takes up so much room at the bottom. Um, I have to make it more towards the top. I promise you by the time we get done, the card will be balanced, but but because of the background, <laughs> because of the background and the size of the uh, pumpkins and leaves, I had to scoot it up toward the top. So now I just adhered this down. And then after looking at it, I decided that I wanted these to have a little bit of height. So I just cut two more of the die cuts for the pumpkin and for the thankful. And then I'm just going to layer these up. So ultimately, I'm going to have uh, three layers and then that will go down. It will lift up my image and just give it a little bit more interest. I was really kind of on the fence um, in making, like in putting the card together because I was like, this oval kind of looks a little bit like the ocean and that's totally not the vibe I'm going for. I was going for more like a blue sky vibe. Um, but I think in the end it comes out okay. Uh, I just like, sometimes, you know, just got to trust the process. You know what I'm saying? So I stacked up those thankfuls, and then for my little label, I'm going to pop this up on some foam tape. Um, this would look really cute. Like, we just, in the summer, did a bunch of ocean uh, releases. There was, like, a little mermaid and stuff. This little frame would look adorable with that. It would be great for an ocean. That's just not how I'm using it today. So now I'm adhering this down uh, to the bottom, and again, see how it balances out the top, and you wouldn't even know that the oval is closer to the top than it is to the bottom. And then I'm going to put my little sentiments on. Again, this uh, label is popped up and then the thankful has the multiple layers of cardstock. Um, I told you it reminded me of Cinderella. Like it just looks like a little bit of magic, which I was totally feeling that. So I decided to go back in with now that everything is dry and do some more kind of gold splatters. And now we're doing since we're doing it because it's dry, it's not going to uh, spread out. It's just going to be however it lands. Um, and then in order to connect everything and kind of fill in these spaces, I am going to use some of these gemstones. These are the milk glass from Trinity Stamps, and these are one of my favorites, just because they're not just plain white. Like, they catch the light. They are a little bit rainbow-ish. I don't, I really like them. I'm a big fan. So I just use those to kind of fill in that gap in between the sentiment and the image. And then I'm going to add some shimmers. Of course, you know how I roll with the shimmers. Um, with the pumpkins and the flowers. And then the last thing I'm going to do 
just to add like a little bit more of that magic feel, I'm going to go in and add some white highlights to my images. I'm going to add some dots to the flowers, but then I'm also going to add some dots toward the bottom of the background and just kind of fill those in almost like this like magic is kind of floating up off of the pumpkin, which I thought was really, really cute and just something, you know, something different. Um, and then that's really all I did. That's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, I am excited to see if you try to use, you know, create your own frame. I would highly recommend it. Um, and then that's it. Thank you guys so much for your time. I always appreciate it. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye.